Hi Switch Up family and welcome back to the channel. My name is Mark Walker and when I first played Final Fantasy I wasn't ancient like I am now. Final Fantasy 7 is without a doubt one of my favourite JRPGs of all time. I know that's a bit of a cliche to say but I managed to make my first playthrough last 120 hours. I was young. It was okay. I had to ride those chocobo. And for whatever reason, I never actually got to play the original Crisis Core release. Now, it's made its way to the Nintendo Switch. In a week where Pokemon has been patched, and, well, it's not performing any better, and our comments section are filled with people saying the Nintendo Switch is completely outdated, which, in a way, is a bit of a fact, but that that's why it needs a pro model. So I am more than intrigued to see how Crisis Core runs on the Nintendo Switch, and I'm thankful it's not a cloud version. Now, I'm going to play through this one nicely, and slowly so this is simply a performance review there won't be any scores attached hopefully it will help with your buying decision thanks to square enix for the review copy how does crisis core final fantasy 7 reunion run on nintendo switch well let's find out Let's start with the vital statistics. It's going to cost you £49.99 or your regional equivalent and has a download size of around 14.6 gigs and releases on the 13th of December. When you initially start the game up, you do have the choice of Japanese or English voices as well as a normal or hard difficulty mode. The camera can be tweaked in terms of axis, either horizontally, vertically or both. Now before we go into the technical look at the game, as well as the resolution, frame rates, etc, etc, I just want to show you some footage from my playtime so far. So I can cut loose, right? Within reason. Get out of the way, I'm sure you've already got a bit of a taster for what's to come. It runs at 30 frames per second almost all of the time. There are moments where you can make it drop down ever so slightly, but the frame rate and frame pacing is very very good surprisingly good in fact it's very rare that you'll feel any type of stutter in the gameplay and even when there's effects going off all over the place square have managed to make this rusty old switch still perform in a very reasonable way that frame rate carries over to handheld mode and as we can see from a number of different locations you're looking at a rock steady frame rate overall now the stated resolution of 720p in docked and handheld seems to have been achieved by using dynamic resolution scaling that is to say the resolution will drop below 720p but then the AI upscaling will kick in and it keeps everything looking quite nice. Again much better than I expected. There are certain tricks here with the image quality and the resolution to try and keep that frame rate tight. One of those will be distant fog in certain areas to keep things ticking over that image quality really is quite impressive cutscenes in some areas seem to be a video pre-recorded footage this is generally noticeable when there's a slight image increase but also there's some artifacting a telltale sign we saw it in hellblade send you a sacrifice it doesn't look bad by any means and the transitions almost instantaneous when they're not using pre-rendered videos the overall sharpening is working well the image retains a lot of its detail and quality and while some of the textures do look a little muddy it never looks bad with the important things being kept in now if it is using ai upscaling and it's certainly using some form of dynamic resolution scaling the area that it affects the most is the character's hair now you can see that here this is simply due to there not being enough pixels the ai can only do so much with what it's given and you also see some cross hatching again where there's simply not enough data for the upscaling to work quite correctly now staying on the visual quality side there is solid anti-aliasing it keeps keeps all of those exterior surfaces looking reasonably smooth. Even when that resolution's dropping down below the surface, it's only when you really look into the background that you'll see just how low it potentially is. There's some really smart work here. Environmental dynamic lights are active in some areas and not in others, possibly in the places you travel more frequently, which makes sense. Real-time shadows are cast by the player and the quality of those is also reasonably good. What really blew me away though is that they've actually kept in the screen space reflection reflections on the marble and metal surfaces. This means you can see real-time reflections from both yourself and the NPCs in the environment. Now there seems to be a distance trigger to this, but still lights will be reflected on the floor, doorways can be seen, and even this large map as well as the two doors are all reflected in real time onto the ground on a Nintendo Switch on a Tegra 1 chip while still maintaining 30 FPS. I caramba. Load times are equally impressive. Transitions from exteriors to interiors can be as 
fast as two or three seconds. They're not all that quick, but they're all fast enough that they don't become any sort of issue. As you can probably hear, I am more than a little bit surprised by how this has turned out. I probably shouldn't have been after the work the team did on Near Automata. Character models, as well as those of your enemies, are overall excellent. When we jump over to handheld then, you can see that the 720p resolution in handheld mode means that things do look much crisper. That's not to say it looks bad in docked because it doesn't, but handheld is where things really shine. Now it looks that they've cut down some of the visual effects, certainly some shadowing and maybe some of those dynamic lights to keep it ticking over, but it's not what I would call bad see what you think. One new area to our performance reviews is input latency, that being the time it takes for the controller to register the input you've made into the game. While we're not going to go as far as timing this and slowing it down, based on feel alone, it feels very responsive. It's a title where you'll have to dodge out the way of enemy attacks, block, or perform your own counters and magic, and everything feels just spot on. Sound and audio has made a very good transition. Having not listened to the version on the other consoles, it's difficult to say whether this has been downsampled for Switch, but overall things seem to be okay. The voice actors, eh, not quite as much, but let's take a listen. So before we take a look at the gameplay then, my overall takeaway is that Square Enix have really impressed. The Switch version came in a little later than other consoles, and I'm thinking that's because they were waiting for a patch. The version number isn't 1.0, we're looking at 1.0 one or something similar and fair play to them they wanted to show the best work they could and that's exactly what they've done gameplay wise then it's very action heavy with a one button attack a block and a dodge as well as the ability to lock onto enemies with materia being tied to the four buttons a b x and y in combination with lb it's a relatively simplistic system i always find myself instinctively trying to activate a heavy attack and i'm still trying to get my head around the limit break system which essentially has almost a lottery spinner going off in the corner. And when the numbers align, you'll unlock certain characteristic improvements or buffs, as well as the potential for a limit break, which can be activated with X. It seems fun enough, although the combat engaged has already got a little bit annoying. As I say, I want to play through this one slowly. The nostalgia is real and the soundtrack is so good. It's just nice to be back in the Final Fantasy VII universe. There's a chance I'll release a full review maybe next week, but I will not be rushing to push through this one. I just want to have a laugh with it, to be honest. If you've got any questions about it, please do pop it down in the comments. I do hope that this performance review has at least made your purchasing decision a little easier. There are, after all, lots of reviews out for the game, and they seem to be predominantly positive. It was just a little bit sketchy that we hadn't seen the Switch version yet, so this makes things much easier. Thanks to all of you. If you do like the Joy-Cons you saw in the video, all the links in the description. If you want to save 10% on the game, you can use code SWITCHUP over at switchup.gg, and we get a tiny little kickback from Nintendo. And just a big thank Thanks to all of you. Remember, we're giving away that Nintendo Switch OLED in, what, a mere 10, 15 days? How, how long is it till Christmas? No, it's like 20 days. <laughs> it's a while, isn't it? But we are giving that away, so stick around the channel. Oh, and check out the review of Chained Echoes that went out today. What a game that is. But thanks to our Patreons and members and to all of you for all things Switch, all the time. Keep your Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya! You're in for it now! Concentrate. I'm feeling it.